This video covers the arpeggio for D minor chord. D minor, or in the, scale, or the key of D minor. D minor is the relative minor to F major. It's got one flat. And the arpeggio is the chord, is it the one chord in D minor. It's a D, an F, and an A. We're, we're spread out here, so I'm going to use here. And then, and then these are here. I'm going to come down here. Fourth finger on the F in the left hand. It's the same routine we've done throughout all the others. Do the tremolo exercise, one note per beat up and down, one octave, and accent and drop the wrist on the accents. That is, lower the wrist each time you play. Don't play with a stiff wrist. Here, relax. Concentrate on relaxing as best you can. Use the weight to push the notes down. It's almost like I'm pulling the notes down. Once you finish that, then you go ahead and do the arpeggio, one octave up and down, one note per beat. And that's good enough. You don't need to push yourself. You'll have plenty of time for the other stuff later. For the intermediate, you do everything in the beginner, plus two notes per beat at two octaves. And you can start here again if you want. You can start down here. Let's go ahead and start down here. And we start with a tremolo exercise. Go up and down one octave, and then two, two octaves of two notes. arpeggio, one and two octaves, one and two notes per beat is here. Good enough. You're getting an idea of crossing the thumb and what all this feels like. For the advanced, you do everything in the beginner and the intermediate. Although by now, if you've been doing the tremolo like you're supposed to, you may not need the tremolo anymore. You should have a good feeling of what this arpeggio feels like. I mean, it feels the same as C major, F major, G major, E minor. Any of them that use all white keys use the same fingering, the same feel. So D minor is the same. They all use the same. So hopefully by now you're getting a feeling of this. It's just the notes are different. You do one, two, three, and four octaves, so one, two, three, and four notes per beat. It's the same pattern we've been using. And go ahead and come down an octave below middle C here. You start here. Once you've done those, then do the inversions. So you keep the same fingering. It's just now we're going to start on fourth finger and here, or here. This and this is the same pattern we've done on all the others. One, two, and three, and four octaves. Okay. And then second inversion, you're here, except for a second you need to come down an octave. We're getting too high. So come down here to do this. It's the same pattern and do the contrary. That's the challenge on these inversions because then the fingers are getting all jumbled up. But if you can learn to do the contrary motion on these, you will really know these arpeggios. And when you run into them in the music, you don't even have to look at the keyboard because you already know what it feels like. You'll be able to play them. Doesn't matter if they're in parallel thirds or parallel sixths or none of that. Because if you can do this contrary stuff, you drill them into your fingers well enough, you will be able to do them in whatever pattern is needed. It works very well.